What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kevin Jackwitz. This is the Cage Review. And I'm about to review WWE NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. This show didn't have a lot to it as far as content, but what they had sold every inch of the way. This was one of the best things I've seen in quite a while. And I typically say that when it comes to NXT. Um, they have found a groove and it works. They have good storylines, they have good characters, they have amazing wrestling matches. And let's get into the amazing wrestling matches, shall we? Because these guys, I honestly just stole it from WWE. Like, the main roster, I don't know what they're doing and I don't really understand the direction WWE has gone in, but NXT outshines them in every way, every time. Great match to kick it off. We have Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong from the Undisputed Era versus Trent Seven and Tyler Bates from Mustache Mountain. Uh, I can't get into the Mustache Mountain name, but the wrestlers themselves are very, very good. This match, all the way through, was holy shit moments. It was a lot of action. It was a lot of suspense to it. You didn't really know who was going to take it. There was so many near falls and stuff like that. It sold to where you, you know, kind of felt like anybody could take it. But the impact from some of the shots really was just what sold it for me. These guys went in, they were hard hitting, and I mean hard hitting at times, and it really sold the match. So I was absolutely ecstatic to see this. At the end of the day, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong, they come away with the title belts, this is for the Tag Team Championship, and... It was just a very, very good match. Uh, Undisputed Era has been very good since they arrived on the scene, especially with Adam Cole. And man, it just worked. So after the match, you have War Raiders who come in and attack Undisputed Era. Um, and it was kind of like the signature to, okay, this is our next feud that's going to be popping up. And it worked. Then you get Velveteen Dream versus EC3, Ethan Carter the third, of course. And again, a very good match. I'm a huge fan of Velveteen Dream. And I like some of EC3's stuff. I, I don't know that I've really seen enough, but I've seen enough to say that alright, he's at least decent. Um So the match itself was very good. Um Velveteen Dream picks up the win. I kind of expected that. Uh, they, they've kind of been pushing him as like someone who's going to be a really big guy in the company. So we'll have to wait and see what happens when he gets pulled up to the main roster because they've said that a lot of times and careers get shit on. Then you get an amazing, amazing match. You get Ricochet versus Adam Cole. This is for the NXT North American Championship and there were some crazy spots in this match. like. Ricochet is a human highlight reel for real. Like this guy, it's amazing how athletic and acrobatic this guy is. And some of the spots, some of the timing, even from Adam Cole. You know, it really had to be spot on. There was a spot where um, Ricochet does his springboard flip off of the rope, off the middle rope. He jumps on and kind of does his backflip. And while he's literally mid-backflip, upside down, Adam Cole comes up and kicks him in the face and lays him out. And the spot just looked so good. Like, it really sold it. Damn, that was an impact. And it was just amazing. Amazing athleticism and amazing timing. And that's what I love to see out of matches. That's why we don't get, you know, from Raw and SmackDown anymore. We just don't. We don't get it. And I, it sucks, but whatever. Uh, so, amazing match all the way through. A bunch of near falls from both sides. Both guys really highlighted themselves and I think looked really good. Even though the loser lost, which was Adam Cole, Ricochet wins the belt. Um, I think both guys really made a name. I really do. So then you move on to the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, Women's Champion Shayna Baszler goes up against Kyrie Sane. And Kyrie Sane, you know, playing the underdog story, of course. Shayna Baszler being the absolute badass, you know, MMA chick. Um, and it really does kind of play out like that. Shayna runs roughshod a lot of the match. And then Shayna, at the end of the match, gets Kyrie Sane in a hold. Kyrie turns it into a pinning predicament and actually wins the title from Shayna Baszler. So I'm hoping that means they're going to call Shayna up to the main roster pretty soon. Don't know that that's 
what's going to happen, but that's my hope. Uh, because she is good, and you know, now that she's been women's champion and uh, lost it to Kyrie Sane, I think she is good enough to bring up to the main roster. Especially compared to some of the women on the main roster already. Holy shit. Um, and then you get the last match of the night, which of course is Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. They've, um, I think they've done like the last three NXT takeovers. They've done the main event match. And killed it every fucking time and this is no different they had some crazy spots on this match uh, one that really stands out is they're somewhere kind of in the crowd but like where they have some stuff set up some technical equipment and uh, Gargano puts champ on a table and does this like dive onto the table and um, they, they just had some really great spots in here um, at the end of the day I have Johnny Gargano won, but I don't think that was true. I think it was T Champa won, because this was where uh, Gargano hit him with the knee, and they were both kind of laid out. Uh, looked like Gargano hit his knee, but Champa wound up standing up first. So I think I wrote that wrong. It's actually Champa who won. Um, great match, absolutely fucking amazing match. Uh, everything that you would expect from Gargano and Champa. It was long. It was hard hitting. These guys are both Iron Men, in my opinion. Uh, they go for endurance matches where it's fast paced, hard hitting, and they last quite a while. These matches are just excellent every time. So NXT, my voice just cracked. Did you catch that? Holy shit! I'm 40 years old. And I just hit puberty. <laughs> But these guys, they're amazing. They really are. Um, I have been so impressed with all the matches that they've had. I really feel like, I, I hate to say it, but I feel like at least Johnny Gargano, when he hits the main roster, is not going to have the NXT career he has. Uh, you know, look at guys like Ty Dillinger, who were good in NXT and then became nothing. But Gargano, I just, I have this fear with the way he's built, the way he looks that once he hits the main roster, it's going to go downhill. Champa, I'm not entirely sure. He's got a good look about him, but he's not exactly a big guy. Um, but this ta this takeover was amazing. It really, really was. Uh, I loved everything about it from beginning to end. There were really no low points to this. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm fighting with 10 out of 10. I mean... I'm trying to think if there's anything that really holds it back, and maybe the Velveteen Dream EC3 match. Uh, I don't know. I'll give it a nine and a half out of ten. I, I'm really. It was such a damn good show. It really was. They knocked this fucker out of the park, and I mean, just. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. NXT Takeover Brooklyn. Uh, nine and a half out of ten. Damn near perfection. Just entertaining all the way through. So that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, if you agree with me, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Until next time, Cage Nation out.